Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge. We rescue animals and give them the best lives possible in captivity. We dedicate ourselves to providing quality care for the animals that call our refuge home. In a single day, we can experience the highest highs and the lowest lows. Yet, at the end of the day, we are a family. Hey guys, welcome to this week's live feed. Um, I'm just going to start from the beginning because I don't know where I left off. So uh, this week's cat of the week is going to be Sadie the Bobcat. Sadie was uh, privately owned. Uh, we rescued her at a very young age. She's uh, 16 years old and uh, the reason we had to rescue her, unfortunately a family um, found her next to her mom that had been shot. Uh, they were going to try and keep her as a pet and uh, they figured because she's young they had also I guess previously had a bobcat so they decided they were going to try and keep her. They shortly realized that that wasn't going to work out very well and that their young child and a young bobcat was not going to She was rescued at a very young age. She's definitely one of our um, more feisty animals for a lack of a better word right now um she definitely is kind of can be nice to some people and kind of aggressive or just aloof toward others and that's totally natural that's a that's a good characteristic for a bobcat to have in the wild and um, unfortunately situations like that we always encourage people to um, contact a rehabilitator situations um, sometimes they can go back out into the wild where they belong and that's always ideal so when we get calls on young animals we always try to seek help from a rehabilitator if they're a good candidate for that so um, Sadie was brought to us again at a very young age and she's lived here her entire life um, we were able to introduce her a few years ago to Dylan, another bobcat, also privately owned. So Dylan was a little bit different situation. He was purchased from a breeder. That breeder told this family that if you don't feed him raw meat, he'll stay nice and sweet for you. They did have him declawed as well. Um, so their course of action was to feed him canned chicken and canned tuna. Now that is not proper nutrition for a domestic cat either, um, and it's definitely not proper nutrition for a wild animal. Uh, so Dylan was pretty emaciated when they rescued him, and um, we spent uh, a little while getting him to recover nutritionally. Uh, we were able to rescue him and um, get him on the path to nutrition very quickly, so he doesn't seem to have any lasting effects from that, which we're really um, pleased about, as you might imagine. Um, some animals that we rescue do have issues like metabolic bone disease and some other things. Um, you know nutri nutritional deficiencies that can have an effect their whole life so we are very fortunate that that uh, was not the case with either Sadie or Dylan um, so we have a lot of questions on introductions here at the refuge and and on Facebook so a lot of people are wondering why we don't introduce more or why we chose to introduce um, certain animals to each other uh, there's a lot of factors that go into introductions as you might imagine it's uh, just like when you bring a puppy into your home there's a lot of uh, factors that go into um, animals personalities um, situations activity level just uh, things that you guys have to be aware of when you are introducing a new family member into your home as well well these guys we can't just go in and separate so uh, it's a very can be a very lengthy process so just a little bit of background, all cat species except lions are solitary in the wild. So when we're able to have animals introduced together, um, that's a good thing. It, it does provide companionship, enrichment, someone to play with, someone to snuggle with, different things like that. So if the animal is receptive to that, we might try an introduction. A lot of our animals that are solitary at the refuge are by choice. They choose that way. Um, we have some animals that can't even border the same wall with another cat. They're just um, way too aggressive. Uh, just like people, there's different personalities. Some animals are naturally anti antagonistic by nature, so they're going to constantly irritate the cat next to them, which can cause a problem. There's also just activity levels. Some animals are really hyper and playful, and if you were trying to introduce an older animal with that, that'd be really annoying. Um, people that have siblings, your little annoying brother is, you know, that's a big age difference is really annoying. So. A lot of those things we take into consideration. So if we are going to do an introduction, um, it's definitely discussed. Personalities are discussed, activity level, things like that. And we always start really slow. So we may put the animals next to each other um, and see how they do. And if they you know, seem nice, 
um, you know, then we might decide to, to go further with that. So we give them what's called playtime, uh, supervised playtime. So we'll introduce them in a smaller area in a very controlled, as much controlled environment as we can. And um, we see how they interact for like an hour together. And then we go ahead and separate them. And we do that for a little while. And sometimes, you know, this can take months to do. You don't ever want to rush that. It's just not... Um, Safety is going to be the number one consideration. Again, we can't just go in and split them if it doesn't work out. So we take that part very seriously and we want to go slow. It's much better to take a, take your time with it, make sure something's going to work, um, then rush it and, you know, someone get, you know, an animal get hurt. So we, we take that very seriously. Um, that being said, we do have a lot of successful introductions. We've introduced bobcats, uh, male lions. We have our cougars that are introduced. And um, we've done some bear introductions too. Not as commonly tiger introductions, but sometimes um, we do those. So it really just depends on a ton of factors. That was a really long answer, um, but uh, you guys are probably used to that by now. Um, so anyway, if you guys have more questions, just feel free to shoot them in the comments, um, either um, through the rest of the last segment or uh, definitely in the comments and we'll get them answered for you throughout the day. Um, the team member of the week is Victor Smith and uh, I'll let you tell, uh, tell you a little bit about himself. Hi, I'm Victor Smith and I work at Turpentine Creek as the maintenance coordinator. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis we deal with anything and everything that breaks, um, building bear habitats, lion habitats, to fixing leaky water pipes. Alright, hey guys, um, do you have any questions that, uh, that we'd like to answer? Go ahead and uh, shoot them in the comments and we'll get them answered for you guys. Oh, my favorite animal. Um, one of my favorites, I'm horrible about picking. So one of my favorites is Magic, uh, one of the spotted leopards that we have. Um, yeah, there's categories, so I'll go with Magic right now. <laughs> So we're checking to see if there's any more um, questions to come through. Uh, the two cats behind me are Poncho and Montana, and two of our animals that live together. They were rescued during our Colorado project. Now they actually live outside one of the bed and breakfast rooms, so definitely check that out. And uh, we'd love to have people stay with us and you get a really behind the scenes and uh, just an extra view of, um, of the facility and the animals here when you choose to stay with us. Oh yeah, um, someone was commenting how foggy it is. It is super foggy today. Um, it's supposed to be cloudy, but at least it's not in the teens like it was all last week. Um, but yeah, so we're here, rain or shine, cold or heat. Um, I prefer the heat, but that doesn't matter right this time of year. So um, definitely we're out here 20, well, we live on property, so we're out here 24 seven literally, but we're here every single day um, to care for the animals. They always need to be cleaned and fed and taken care of. So definitely um, anytime that you guys wanna come out and visit us, we are here. What's, uh, I got a question, what's the hardest thing to deal with? Mm. I'm a whiner, so everything, no. Um, Definitely making sure that the animals are warm enough. We give everybody bedding and um, extra materials in this way. Um, we give them extra bedding and everything like that. We're in the process of building some indoor night areas, night houses uh, for some of our smaller animals that we've talked about a little bit. Um, the water is freeze constantly. So we're out there uh, making sure the animals have water and different things like that. We haven't I'm gonna knock on whatever is out here, but we haven't had any snow yet. That can be pretty challenging to you. Um, they're night houses we have to go in and shovel out, things like that. So definitely some of that becomes a little more backbreaking um, for us having to shovel. But uh, of course the animals are worth it and we're, we're glad to do that for them. So I don't know if I answered your question, but there you go. <laughs> Yeah, so we get a question, how much do the cats eat? It does depend on the animal, of course. The little guys get anywhere from a half pound to a pound. Um, the two large males behind me get about 15 pounds a day. So it really depends. In the winter time, their metabolism speeds up a little bit to um, help 
you know, keep them warm. So we do increase their diets a little bit. Um, our curator and our commissary manager go through every other week and uh, work on diet so we can make sure and keep the animals um, at a healthy weight. Um, and things like that so it really just depends most of the tigers on average you know seven to ten pounds this time of year um, so we go through about you know six to seven hundred pounds a day right now for everybody um, so we have a question are there any other rescues being considered uh, we have some um, calls out on things like that, but we'll definitely keep you guys updated as we get information on new rescues, um, but not any at the moment. <laughs> okay, so I guess we don't have any more questions. Um, so we'll definitely uh, sign off. If you have more questions throughout the day, just shoot them in the comment section and we'll get them answered for you. I appreciate you guys tuning in. So we're probably gonna change up the videos a little bit for next week. We're gonna add an additional uh, video. So you guys probably won't see me on Tuesdays. But uh, Emily's going to be doing a segment and just different things as well. So definitely keep tuning in and we appreciate everyone's support, uh, likes, comments, and shares. And uh, thank you the animals here. You guys have a great day.